first, I, I'd really just like to thank you all for coming. Not just for myself and Robin, but for Duke as well. Oh, this is so difficult. Well, he's everything a Scotland's supposed to be. Very serious on the outside, but more than a little shy on the inside, wouldn't you say? He'd have been terribly embarrassed that we were getting here together to talk about what a great man he was. He'd have been pleased, but he'd been very embarrassed. He'd have sooner died than let something like that. So he did. I'm sorry, I really can't get over how unfair it is to lose someone when you've been together for such a short time. I don't know what I'm going to do, you see. Because he used to put so much into one little day. And I loved him. He was very sentimental. And he cared about everybody close to him and he would do anything for anyone in trouble. It's ironic, really, the way we met at a police ball where I was being honored for something or the other, and as soon as I saw him, that was it for me, basically. It was over. He didn't say anything to anyone, but I knew I wanted to spend the rest of my life with him. And then suddenly he wasn't there, and I thought that I wouldn't see him again, but I did that night, and I? I was booking Funnily enough, somebody who's now a very good friend of the family's. And in walked Mr. Duke Lavery to bail him out. So I was chief of police at the time, but it really didn't change the way I felt about him. I mean, I knew he was going to be trouble. Um, and he never tried to hide his past, and he never apologized for it. He said that he couldn't change that, you see. That's what he used to say. But what he could change, he did, and that was his future. I'd like to be able to say that as soon as we got married, you know, we, we lived happily ever after. He was able to get away from the mob. But, see, life doesn't happen that way. Even after his father died, the mob still considered that he was one of their own. And Victor Jerome was determined to bring him back into the family business and eventually pass it on to him. But Duke was determined that he was going to end that connection the only way he knew how, which was by making it cease to exist. And you all know what happened. Even the press, if you've got the guts to admit it. He became an informant for the police. And his testimony broke the mob. And he died. Now, I'm sure some of you may wonder why he didn't find a better way of getting out of the mob other than seeming to go along with it. But what I don't understand is why some of you could have accused him of still being a member of that organization. Now, I know because I was there. I was in some of those meetings with Jerome. So I know what went on. I can tell you. He wanted to protect us. He wanted that violence to end. And he died believing in that. Now, we knew that his testimony was a death sentence. So, Duke Robin and I agreed that we would go into a, a witness protection program. And we almost made it. I'm sorry. But you see, he was betrayed. One of the federal agents said that the meeting place had been changed and that there was an ambush ahead. And all he could think of was that Robin and I would walk into it. So he ran to stop it. And there was a trap. But you see, it wasn't for us. It was for Duke. And he died trying to save us. Now the next morning when I went home, there was a bouquet of white roses on our door. And that means that it's a sign 
that the vendetta is settled and the war is over. Duke wanted that violence to end, and now it has. And I can't help but think he feels his death is a fair price to pay, that Robin and I are all right. Well, I don't agree with him. Because I want him back. And I will be forever proud to call myself Mrs. Duke Clavery. By on Bonnie Banks, by on Bonnie Brace, where the sun shines bright on love. On the bunny, bunny banks of Loch Lomond.